Let's have a quick look at how types are represented in the JXR VM. If you have any object on the heap or an array on the heap, then those have a header field called tib. And this tib field is a pointer reference to a data structure on the heap called a type information block or tib. This type information block is in a way a data structure that can be used quickly at runtime, for example, for virtual dispatch. So if you invoke a virtual method, the table of virtual methods is stored in the type information block. Or if you want to do a quick test of is this object of type X or is a subtype of type X, the information needed to do the subtype tests is also stored in the tip. But there is more information than just what's in the tip about the given type. So the tip has a pointer to a RVM class object or more generally an RVM type object but here we look at a special case of this being an RVM class object. And this RVM class object contains essentially all the information we know about this specific type. So it contains, contains all the methods that this type has, all the fields the type has, all the super type information, everything necessary for the runtime. The RVM class has a back pointer to the tip. So if you have an RVM class object in your hand, you can use the type information block field to find the address of its corresponding tip. So you can navigate back and forth from a tip to the RVM class and back. Besides the RVM class object, there's also a third object for each type, and that object is a Javalon class object. So this essentially is the public API towards the type system. So in Java, you have this Javalon class, which is specified as a given uh, interface, a given set of methods it supports. And in the JX RVM, this Javalon class is kind of like an adapter or a facade to the type system. And it doesn't really store much, it essentially has a back pointer to a RVM class object. So if you use java.lang.class and then say give me the methods, what really happens is it delegates this to the RVM class, which is the real implementation. There is yet another object for each type, and that's a type reference. So the type reference, which you can find given an RVM class by following its type ref field is in a way a lightweight representation of this type. It exists before an RVM class and tip and Javalon class are created. It's used for lazy resolution. So if you load a class, that class usually refers to all kinds of other classes. And you don't want to load all those classes that this class depends on and maybe transitively depends on, but you're going to just create type reference for those other classes. And once you need more information about the other classes, you can resolve the type references and essentially produce RVM class object, tip object, and Javalon class object. The type reference, this is pointing the wrong way, the type reference actually points back to the RVM class once it's been initialized. So once you resolve a type reference, the type field points to the RVM class where you can get all the detailed information. When the type reference is not yet resolved, the type field is null and so you can't actually or you don't actually have behind it any RVM class. So you have those four objects for each type, for each Java type represented in the JX RVM. Let's look at how these objects are actually represented inside the RVM by looking at our RDB debugger. So let's say we want to look at uh, an object. A uh, good point to start is some of the strings that we point to from the JTOC. So here is a string object. A string object has four fields and it has two header fields. And as I mentioned before, one of those header fields is the pointer to the tip. So I can double click on this and then get to my tip. This is the tip of class JavaLong string. And it has, as I mentioned, the V table, the virtual method table. So every method that 
every virtual method that's part of the string class is listed here at the corresponding index. So that's in essentially the V table inlined into this tip. And then you have some information about supertype structure. Now the first or zeroth slot in our tip is the pointer to the RVM class. So we can follow this and we get back to our RVM class object for class Java long string. The RVM class object has further pointers, for example, the class for type field, which points to a Java long class object for Java long string. If you're in the Java long class, we have a type field, we can go back to our RVM class object for class Java long string. We also have a field in our RVM class, type ref, which points to the type reference. And once you're in the type reference, you see that the type reference points back to the RVM type. If it's resolved, in this case here it is actually, because you see the pointer here and you can go back to our RVM type. And it has two fields that are interesting that define the type really. The name, so that's fully qualified class name in the internal notation, L java slash long slash string semicolon. And it's the class loader who loaded this class or who refers to this class. Okay, so those two types, those two pieces of information, the name and the class loader uniquely identify a type. And once it's resolved, you can follow this pointer and we get our RVM class with all the details I mentioned. So for example, the super classes, all immediate subclasses, the interfaces it declares, fields, methods, constructors, and so on and so forth. 